And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, Tom Vassell here, and today we're taking a look at a game called Terra, Ireland's Royal Board Game. Now, one of the cool things about going to a large convention, and we were at the Essen Spiel Fair, is you see all sorts of huge board game companies, but you also see very small ones. And we happen to be very close and stand to uh, Tail Ten Games, uh, which is, the, this was their only game that they made, Terra, but it kind of intrigued me because it had pieces that interlocked together. Um, basically, it was based on some ring forts that upon a hill of Terra, and it was an abstract strategy game. So, close proximity always helps to our booth, so I went over and checked the game out. And actually, it's a series of abstract strategy games that all kind of use some similarities to them. Let's take a look. Now there are several games in the rule book. All of them are gonna use the same board which can be placed in the box like this. So the board is kind of a, a grid here of squares. Each player is gonna have pieces that are ring forts, they're called, which can be placed in the holes here. And they're also going to have these bridges pieces. So let me tell you about the first game in, in this set, which is called Sacred Hill. In this game, player is gonna be placing these. The first part of the game you're going to be just basically placing your pieces out. You, after your first piece, each other piece has to be a knight's move away, like in chess, where it's two spaces, one direction, and one another place. And each player is going to do that. And the only rule is you can't have it close to one of your pieces within a knight's space. You could, it can be next to someone else's. For example, blue can put his there. Then maybe red puts his here. See, blue has a knight's space here, but that would be too close to this one. So maybe blue goes here. And then red goes here. And then blue is going to go here. And so the players are gonna take turns putting their pieces on the board until no one else can put pieces on the board. So let's see if we can figure this out. Is there any more spots to put red? That's too close. Uh, well, red can go here. And then blue. Where else could blue go? It is possible that blue is finished. Blue could get a piece down here, but if he puts it here, it's too close to that blue piece. Blue could go up here, but that's too close to that blue piece. Blue could go here, but too close to that blue piece. So it looks like we're finished. I'm sure someone who's really good at the game could probably tell me where we've messed up. So that's the first part. Now the second part, you're gonna start placing pieces on the board. This is the battle part of the game. During this part of the game, you're gonna be building ring forts next to friendly ring forts. So for example, maybe the red and red's first turn, he's gonna place one here. Now when you place them, you're going to build a bridge between them. And while it might not be so obvious from the video, the bridges can go two different ways, but there's always one way they go based on, on the lines of the pieces that are played out there. So now these are, are connected. So maybe blue on his next turn is going to place one here because he's trying to stop the red ones from being connected. And that one look goes there. And maybe next time, red will go here now, which is going to form two of those. So red goes there, and red goes there. And you can see kind of it forms this really cool looking knot as they go through. And it's just kind of to show you how the pieces are connected. And so blue goes here now, which is going to attach those two. And so this one, is goes like that and then this one goes like that i think all right so you can see the, the the really kind of cool knots and what you're trying to do in this game is you are trying to have the fewest of these sections on the board and in fact the game has a rule that if you completely surround one of your opponents then boom that becomes your color which actually is a bad thing. You don't necessarily want to capture your opponent because you want them to have more groups. At the end of the game, whoever has the fewer groups wins, and then if there is a tie, then whoever has the most territory on the board is the winner. So that is basically how you play the first game, Sacred Hill.
You can kind of up the ante with the second game here where there are these king pieces that you're going to put here. And the setup for this game is similar, but this time the kings are actually going to move and leave pieces behind them. And then once they're done, you'll be moving pieces, trying to capture other uh, people's kings, and still setting up these ring forts on the board with the different lengths. And the rules and the win condi conditions are very similar. The difference here is you're going to be trying to capture your opponent's kings to give them fewer moves to make because they'll be moving around the board and dropping pieces off. And so the, each game has kind of a similar feel to it, um, and then there's even ways to make the games more complex. Now, abstract strategy games are kind of a mixed bag. There are some that I really like, and there are some that uh, they're not that good. And so I'm looking for, when I find an abstract strategy game, I'm looking for something that is kind of different. And at the same time, I believe abstract strategy games are best when they have simple rule sets. And you know what? This game does have simple rule sets, at least for the first game. They get a little bit more complex, but because of that, I think the first game, which is the Sacred Hill, is probably the best. High Kings of Terror is fine, and Poison Chalice uh, adds a little bit to that. And then there's that level two, which I haven't, I haven't even tried the level two, because I'm really content at the level one thing. And, but I do think that it's cool that there are three games in the box, but the basic game, now it's cribbing the, uh, uh, the night move from chess, but whatever, you have these pieces and you're putting them out there, and it's kind of this intriguing thing because you are trying to cut your opponent off and not let them connect together because you want them to split up, but at the same time you don't want to surround them. It's kind of an intriguing game where it's like, hey, capture me because that helps me out. And the way the pieces connect together is superfluous really, right? When you put these pieces down, those bridges don't really mean anything. Although in the one game they do, because depending on how you might have some pieces together, but they're in two separate loops. But it looks really cool. And I like that. I think an abstract strategy game should look nice. And when this is out there and all the loops are moving around the board, it just has a really cool look to it. And, and like I said, I like the fact that the game is simple. You are simply putting pieces on the board, trying to, you know, it's almost like a simplified version of Go as you're pushing, you know, the pieces into different corners and trying to get your own groupings together. And then at the beginning, and I know the beginning matters as you put those night moves out, but for the life of me, I'm kind of just doing it as I set up. And this is certainly a game I think that someone who is an expert at it will demolish somebody who's never played it before. But that's not, that, that, that's not a bad feature for the game to have. So this is certainly a game that I'd recommend that you check out, if you like abstract strategy games anyway. It's, it looks gorgeous. You put it on your table and people are like, ooh, what is that? They even have a super nice version that's wooden. But um, the, even the, 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 this is the base game that I have, and I think it has some cool ideas. There's a lot of different variety between the three times two, six different games that are in the box. So that is Terra. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.